G'day folks and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about tapped horns, specifically tapped horn subwoofers. And you might be asking yourself, what on earth is a tapped horn? What's a horn? What's a subwoofer? What is water? What is air? I don't know if I can answer all those questions, but I will try to answer a lot of them. Right now you're looking at the two tapped horn subwoofers I built for my home theater, and we'll get into those momentarily. But for now I'm going to try and explain what a horn is and what it does. So I've prepared a little visual demonstration down here for you at floor level. So here we have a speaker. Now the way a speaker works is this diaphragm here pushes on the air to make sound. It makes sound waves in the air. Now, these things are traditionally not very efficient at this job, at least as they sit. What you really want to do when you have a speaker is make it more efficient and that's what human beings have been trying to do for the last, I don't know, 100 years or so? Probably even longer than that. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not really that good on the history of <laughs> things like that. I'm just a guy who's been designing and building speakers since age 14, so I hope I've picked up enough of it by now to, to at least convince you guys I sort of know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we want to make this guy here more efficient. So how do we do that? Well, there's a few ways you can do that. But the easiest thing to do is to flip her over like that and load this back side of the diaphragm. So you build this box around it, and then you have a port in it. And this puts a load on the back of the diaphragm. So now the front and the back are doing something. This increases your efficiency, but only so much. Remember, this the front of this guy here is still pushing on all kinds of room air. You've got this vast quantity of air all around you. I'll just do this with my shadow puppet hands here. You've got all this air around you, and this little guy is supposed to make sound into all that space. And it's just not very efficient at doing so because it's only got this much area to work with. So what we do is we put a horn in front of it. And I've got kind of a rough mock-up here. We've got a big end, we've got a little end. And what we do is we put the little end here. And that gives us this. Now all of a sudden, you don't have quite so much space for that little driver diaphragm to push against. You've got just the area that's inside this little funnel here. And because it's a funnel, you've got this gradual taper so the sound gets out in a little more organized fashion. Basically what a horn is, and I'll just move this into frame for you. A horn is an impedance transformer. It transforms an area of low impedance here, and it couples it to an area of high impedance over here. That's your room air. That's basically what a horn does. Now a bass horn, like a subwoofer, is just much bigger version of this. Basically, what you want to do with a bass horn is you want to fit the wavelength of a very low sound, like maybe 20 hertz. You want to fit that wavelength into as small a space as possible. But there isn't room for a full 20 hertz wavelength in, a, in an average room. That's something like 50, 60 feet long. So what we do instead is we make it a quarter of the size a quarter to a half the size. That makes it a little more efficient, but it's still 
too big that way because you're still talking about like maybe 10 feet or so. So what we do is we fold up the horn. Now, what's this got to do with tapped horns? What is a tapped horn? I'm getting to that. Be patient. So, panning up to my monsters here in the home theater, if I can make the gimbal behave. It's a little squirrely on me today. As you can see by the traced out lines on the wood there, it's folded up several times. And just let me get up here. I can show you a little bit easier from up close. Actually, we'll go with this top horn first. So, basically what, what's going on here is this is the mouth of the horn here. It comes over this way comes down this way, comes over this way, down this way, and what is my gimbal doing? I do not know. There, got you straightened out. Okay, where were we? We were about here. We go down this way, we come all the way over here, all the way up here, And all the way over to where the mouth is. Here. That's where the mouth is. And I'm not sure about this gimbal, but we'll keep using it. Got no other choice right now. Now, what is a tapped horn? Well, a traditional bass horn just uses the sound from one side of the driver. Just sort of like I kind of showed you down there with the with a cheap Chrysler 5x7, but it only uses one side of the driver. Usually it'll have the back of the driver in a sealed box somewhere, and the front will be loaded with a horn just like this. Now a tapped horn just taps into the horn somewhere near the mouth and uses the other side of the driver to help with the, the sound. So that's basically what we've got going on here. We've got two gigantic tapped horns, and these are 16 hertz tapped horns. So I've taken about a 70 foot wavelength and reduced it down to about 16 feet or so of horn. <clears throat> Sorry about that, it is rather dry in here. So. The one I did first was this one on top. This is Wolfhorn 2. At least that's what I called it back in the day. Yes, there is a Wolfhorn 1. No, you do not want to know about it because I decided that design was so flawed right from the get-go that it wasn't even worth trying. So I didn't try it. And it's all in my head and it's going to stay there because it's terrible. <laughs> anyway, well, actually, I'll tell you a little bit about it. The idea was I wanted to do a 16 hertz tapped horn like this, only I wanted to use 6x9 drivers, and I decided fairly early on that 6x9s weren't going to do it. So I went with something a little bigger, as you're about to see. And actually, I'm going to show you that right now. If I can. This is going to be fun. Okay. I hope you can see this. What we have here are two Tang Band 8x12s. These drivers are not available anymore, so there's no point in me sharing the design of this horn. But there they are. And as you can see, this horn is somewhat well braced. It could be better. That's one of the mistakes I made with this, was I didn't get the bracing quite right. And there's more wrong with it than that. And perhaps we'll talk about it in a second here. Anyway, that top horn was my proof of concept build. And it turned out mostly the way I wanted it to, except for one fairly major problem. I didn't quite get my horn flares right. It's 
got the right path length, but there is a section in this horn, and I'll see if I can find it here. Ah, uh, yes, it's right about here. Right here, if I can show you, right there is the end of one of the boards inside. It's got about that much space right there to go through into the next segment. But if you look up a little bit, we have maybe a 10 inch span here. So right here, we've got multiple horn flares. So that's not exactly what I had designed and modeled in the software. Now, me being me, I couldn't just leave it there. I had to see if I could do better in the next design. So that's what this bottom guy is doing here. As you can see, it's a longer box. It uses different drivers. And in general, I decided I wanted to do the top horn, but only better. So that's what I did with the bottom horn. And I'll show you those drivers in a second here. But for now, I wanted to call your attention to this. See that little strap bracket? And that strap bracket? And this strap bracket? Those are there for a reason. And see this chain up here? That's also there for a reason. That reason being, these things get so loud, this top one tries to walk off the bottom one. And I'm serious. There's a lot of SPL potential with these things, which is why I went with the tapped horn stuff. See, when I first decided to do these, I originally had a gigantic Mach 5 IXL 18 inch subwoofer. It was right in that corner. It was in a box the size of a fridge, tuned to about 11 hertz, and all it would give me at listening position was 113 decibels. And that's it. And that just wasn't enough for me. It would rattle the ductwork. It would sorta get loud, kinda, at listening position. But uh, it just didn't do it for me. So, me being in sort of a difficult room here, I mean, this is a basement. I've got concrete on this wall, concrete on that wall, and concrete down there. Plus, this room's open to the rest of the house. So I knew I needed a lot of SPL, and I just mean a lot. So that's where the tapped horns came in. I needed all that SPL, and I couldn't afford the amplifier power to give me what I wanted in traditional vented designs. Now when I design a tapped horn, it has to put somewhere close to 6 decibels on top of a vented box. And I think I got there with both of these designs. At least I got pretty close. So that's my criteria for designing one of these. It has to be a lot more efficient than a vented box, otherwise why bother? Look, I mean, look at the size of these things. That bottom one is six feet six inches long. It's slightly taller than I am. <laughs> and I'm not a short guy. So, how did I do the bottom one better? Well, I picked different drivers for one. They have a lot more excursion capability than the Tang Band drivers do. They can take more power. And in general, they just give me a little bit more than the top box does. In modeling, this bottom guy right here is able to give me 127 decibels at one meter at 20 hertz with 350 watts. Think about that, that's a lot of SPL. But that's in, in quarter space modeling, mind you. That's corner loaded. The top one, I can't remember offhand what I had it modeled at, but I can tell you what I measured it at. The top one will do 127 at one meter, full open. That's every little drop of power I can put into it. 
1100 watts and you can't do that with the bottom one because it uses motor designs that don't go into power compression like the top one does so you can't you can't run the bottom one that hard because the drivers will clank at that point but the top one will take 1100 watts all day long and give you 127 decibels which is enough as I found out to vibrate the concrete slab underneath there which is quite a trip when that happens anyway enough dilly-dallying let's show you the the bottom guy here if I can get down here now I'm gonna set you up on the tripod because this is really tough to get into okay I hope you can see looks like I gotta do some cobweb dusting in here okay and there you can see what drivers I'm working with here CSS SDX 10s these are still available believe it or not you just have to get them from parts express now but these are the drivers that this horn was designed with it'll work with a few others but I haven't really modeled too many alternate drivers at this point in time so yeah those are my two beasties and why am I talking about this now well I'm kind of getting some wheels turning in my head here I'm thinking about doing another one of these for the channel nothing this size mind you something a little bit smaller and yet still impressive I was thinking it would be cool if I bought four five inch tang band subwoofer drivers and tried to get 120 decibels out of them what do you think about that guys do you want me to do that cuz I'll do it I've been thinking about doing it for years and well I've got extra money now so I could what do you think anyhow I guess that's going to be it for today well except maybe I'll show you how I'm powering these monsters right now it really doesn't take much to power them but I should at least show you what I'm dealing with here well folks there it is this is what's powering those two subwoofers a QSC RMX 1850 HD and I will admit right away that this is way more amp than those subwoofers need right now it's pushing them at 8 ohms so each one's getting about 350 watts but they never see 350 trust me they get so loud so quickly that all that power just is not needed ever I've had those subwoofers up to 121 decibels at listening position and I can't get the clip lights to to even flicker on this amp they're that beastly now when you're talking about tapped horns you have to add signal processing because of their their nature you cannot run them below their tuning frequency very far otherwise the drivers will unload and they will start clanking away like crazy and you'll destroy them that's not good so what I'm using if you can even see back in there is a Rekhorn B2 and I'm not just using it at face value I didn't just start fiddling with the knobs and hope it worked what I did was I used room EQ wizard to test that Rekhorn on every possible setting just to make sure it gave me the curve I wanted for the crossover for these subwoofers and once I got that set I just left it alone really the best thing to do would be some sort of DSP solution like a mini DSP or whatever's out there on the market these days but yeah you need to have some kind of signal processing at least a very basic high pass filter now what high pass filter would I rec recommend for for such things well Wolfhorn XDX the new one on the bottom 
That one's at its best with a 14.5 Hertz high pass at 48 decibels per octave. That'll let you put up to about maybe 600 watts into it without the drivers bottoming out. But uh, that's really pushing it. Just build another one if you, if you want any more than 120 something decibels in one meter. Anyhow, let's conclude things in the office here and then we'll go back over there. Now, why did I even get into this tapped horn stuff in the first place? Well, if you know anything about me, you know I like to challenge myself at varying points in my life. In my 20s, I decided to go back to school for computer programming. And I did that, and I did well at that, but it wasn't enough. In my 30s, I decided to do this stuff, learn about tapped horns. I figured if certain people could figure out how to do it, then so could I. And as it turns out, I could. I got two of them right there to prove it. And that's just been a running theme with me for most of my life. So I like to keep my, my brain a little bit challenged and active. That's kind of what I'm doing with photography and videography now is just continuing on with that and seeing how far down the road it takes me. But it's been so long now, about a yet 11 years or so since I did anything with this tapped horn stuff, I thought maybe I should blow the cobwebs out of my brain and maybe do another one. So y'all are going to have to tell me what you think about that idea. Now I used to have some older videos on my channel showing how these worked and how well they worked. And I think I'm going to try and throw them in at the end here. I can't promise they'll be any good because I recorded them in potato quality on a very old digital camera, but it's the best I've got, so you all will have to make do with it, I guess. I think I'm going to throw the plans for Wolfhorn SDX there into the video so you can pause the screen and get the plans and build one. There are five of them besides mine. Uh, there's one guy in California who built two of them. He's using them as risers. And last I heard, he was very happy with them. There is one other guy that built two of them, and he's very happy with them. And most recently, I had a guy in England build one. At least I think it was England. And he couldn't get the SDX drivers, so he went with an alternate driver. And if I can remember what that driver is, I will put it on the screen right here. Anyhow, man, what was I saying? My brain is just out to lunch today. Not enough Dr. Pepper, I guess. Anyhow, I'm going to conclude things here, and I'll show you these videos, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Okay guys, I'm going to get you a little taste here of what this new horn of mine can do. As you can see, I've got it set up in the corner here. The old horn's directly above it, but not connected for now. And since I don't want to use the projector, I'm using my computer monitor as a little display device. Right now I've got Percy Jackson in there, just right about the Minotaur fight. And at the moment, it's set for LFE at zero decibels. In other words, reference. As you can see, I've got quite a bit of a interesting situation here to contend with. The basement is open to the rest of the house. So that's what this horn's got to fill. So let's get the remote here and see what it can do.
reading without you. You have to. You meant to. Okay, now that I've shown off these two horns once, I figured I'd probably better do it again. Just so you guys can see what they're really capable of. I've got Flight of the Phoenix in right now, and the LFE is set about 10 decibels hot, so we're going to see what it's capable of right now.